if you can start right now. Okay, right now I'm going to start straight away. First of all, regarding the issues of Aisha, I repeat again, he did the contract of the marriage on the age of seven, but the intercourse not before she become age of puberty. This one, and don't repeat it again for your real time. The issue of Christianity on the end of the time, Jesus come to come to abrogate the false Christianity because we believe your Christianity today is false one. The true Christianity was in time of Jesus and his student. After that, St. Paul, who Mr. Saul, who really fabricated all the story, which all your religion based on, is going to be abrogated. Now, that abrogated is not for the true Christianity. He's going to stop you from worshiping him as God and say to his messenger of God. Regarding the issues, uh, gentlemen, he was, I leave it to my colleague. Okay, Abdul, uh, take it, Jalal. Abu Mawahid. Abu? In regards to the, the issue of the Jews and Christians, I was speaking about today, you know, where do you find Muslims fighting Jews because they're Jews or Christians because they're Christians? The reality is that there are Jews being fought because they're occupiers. There are Christians being fought because uh, they're, they're, they're occupiers as well. It's not because, you know, the, the people are not fighting them because they're Christian or Jews. That's not the reason why there's uprising in the Middle East. And um, again, like, like the Sheikh has clarified over and over again, this issue of Aisha has been um, kind of clarified many times and Islam does not permit kind of prostitution as well and prepubescent, you know, intercourse. It's being condemned. You know, it's not permitted. It's not sanctioned in the Quran. So for you to keep bringing up, it makes your argument very weak and very shallow as well. In fact, you don't really have any argument. All you have is falsehood, and that is very clear from um, uh, to all your viewers that are watching today that all you have is falsehood. And obviously, we don't quote the Bible the way you, you know, the way you quote, quote the Quran because we have a better guidance. Our, our guidance is the Book of Allah. It's the final revelation. We don't need to quote your Bible. Everything that the Quran has has brought to us is abrogated all the kind of previous scriptures. It's confirmed, as the Sheikh said, confirmed the previous scriptures, but abrogated them as well. And we have the final testament with us, which is the which is the Book of Allah and the Quran. And I'd, I'd like to invite you all because I know you're going to have the last word. I'd like to invite you all. To Islam and to submit to um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to obey him and to stop not worship the cross or, or Jesus but to worship Allah Almighty and follow the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and to believe in his book. Okay, you still have about three and a half minutes. Oh really, do I? Yes. <laughs> okay, Sheikh Omar, you can, uh, if you like, Sheikh, you can add something. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I think the gentleman, he, he was saying something about the issues of uh, the mut'a is fornications. The mut'a nowadays count as a fornication and Islam is forbid it. Now, before that was nothing called mut'a by the mean of temporary marriage. That's completely different. The ideas of marriage, it is for life, is not temporary. Never was temporary. That was practicing before Islam was not called temporary marriage or mut'a. You see, the mut'a you are talking about is different than what the Shia introduced. So I think you should really just need to read it a little bit. And I am fully really aware that is you have disagreement with Islam, but please at least keep stop quoting people you like and quote only the Quran and the Sunnah. You are quoting and making commentaries of you or some people, you are the one to commentary on them. And you know commentary never was evidence in Islam. Anyway, this is all what we can say today. I hope we can meet in the future with better you know, time and better debate. Thank you very much. Okay. We still have two and a half minutes left, but if you're willing to move on, we allow our Christians six minutes. Yeah, I still have two and a half minutes. You have two and a half if you want to use it. Yeah, I can use it. Go, ahead. go right ahead. Sorry, go right ahead. I, yeah, I, the ideas uh, God ordered me to fight people until they embrace Islam. It's absolutely correct what he said on Sayyid Bukhari. He said, Allah, God ordered me to fight people until they testified no one wanted to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger and to pray our prayer. If they do so, their own life will be protected and they always will be protected. But this hadith got another hadith. If what? And if they accept to live with Muslims under covenant of securities, they will be their own life and property protected. That's why there's many Jews and Christians for 1400 years existing in Middle East because they accept to live on the covenant of security with Muslims. So either you embrace Islam or live in peace. Even the Red Indian said, in peace we come to live with you. So nobody going to force you to become Muslim. But the reason we fight each other, yes, because Muslim and no Muslims. Nobody doubt that your life and property has no protections except if you embrace Islam or if you accept to live with me in 
under the covenant of securities. I live in your countries. When I came to your land, under covenant of securities, I do not fight you. I live in London for about 25 years. I never violate, you know, the sanctity of any person. I never even have traffic, you know, or, or a parking ticket. Why? Because Islam forbid me to live amongst people and to fight them. So the covenant of securities, Abdul Aman. Well, one more minute. Okay, this is the key. So correctly, you said we fight people, and for the sake to be the word of God is highest, and to make Islam prevail, but not to force them to become Muslims because no compulsion in religion. And thank you very much to remind me about the two minutes. After all, I don't want to donate it to you to keep another distortions. I donate it to Abu to Abu Muhammad. Gotta appreciate your sense of humor. Uh, and David and Sam, you have six minutes. Right. <clears throat> Again, I want to just glorify and praise our God and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father's beloved for a uh, wonderful exchange, and I thank my Muslim opponents for a cordial dialogue, debate. Yeah. They're very respectful, and I thank them for that, and I hope in, that in the future we can have such discussions to arrive at truth. Yeah. Uh, let me just real quickly deal with some of the issues that my Muslim opponents brought up, and then I'm going to hand it over to David, and again, trusting the Lord to enable us to speak truth at all costs without error. Um, <clears throat> they said that Muhammad did not sleep with Aisha before puberty. Uh, Muhammad waited until she reached puberty to marry her. Again, this contradicts their own authentic sources. For example, Sahih Muslim number 5981, Sahih Muslim number 5981 says, Aisha reported that she used to play with dolls in the presence of Allah's messenger, <clears throat> and when her playmates came to her, they would leave the house. So when Muhammad married her, she used to play with dolls. He took her into his house when she was playing with dolls, and she would swing on swings. Now, according to Ibn Hajar al Askalani in his commentary on Sahih Bukhari, this is Ibn Hajar in his commentary on Sahih Bukhari, the reason why Aisha was allowed to continue to play with dolls, and these are the words of the translator, Dr. Muhammad Muskhan Khan, because she had not reached puberty. So, according to the authentic sources of Islam, Muhammad at 50 or 54 consummated marriage with Aisha when she had not reached puberty. And don't forget this. When we say that she was nine years old, that's according to the lunar calendar. Because Muslims go by the lunar calendar. If we go by a solar calendar, she would have been younger than nine. So that's number one. That's the first point. The second point, <clears throat> uh, Abu said that the Quran nowhere exhorts Muslims to fight Jews and Christians for their belief, but fight them for their oppression. What I find ironic is that Sheikh Omar contradicts his pupil. Because if you heard what Sheikh Omar said, he goes that David is absolutely correct that Muhammad was ordered to fight people until they believe in Islam. Notice what he said. Muhammad wasn't ordered to fight people who oppressed them. He was ordered to fight and subjugate people because they didn't believe like him. So now, Abu, you have to take it up with your, your uh, sheikh who contradicts you, confirming that the Quran and the Sunnah exhorts Muslims to fight people, especially Jews and Christians, because of their beliefs, not their oppression. <clears throat> and because time is fleeting, I'll make this my final point. He said again, Sheikh Omar repeated, that muta is fornication now. But muta was being observed before Muhammad. Now here's my question to my Muslim opponents. If Muhammad could do away with such humane practices as adoption, don't forget, adoption was being observed before the time of Muhammad. What did he do with this humane institution? He did away with it. If Muhammad could do away with an inhumane practice such as burying infant girls alive, why didn't he prohibit muta from the very start why did he permit it and then abrogate it? So according to Sheikh Omar's own criterion, Muhammad admittedly allowed his Muslim uh, fighters, jihadists, to commit fornication. We would call it today prostitution. Now, I had a lot more to say, but I'm going to hand it over to David, and may the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in everything we say and do. Hey, Sam, uh, I, I'll try and sum up a bit. Uh, notice that Sheikh Omar uh, ordered us not to quote commentaries, and there's a reason for that. Your greatest commentators, Ibn Kathir, the two Jalals, Ibn Abbas, they agree with who? They agree with Sam and me. That's your greatest commentators are on our side. Uh, Abu said we don't have arguments, we have falsehood, but actually we laid out a very careful argument from the beginning. We argued, number one, that uh, Islam looks like a religion that arose in 7th century Arabia. Now, Sheikh Omar didn't dispute this. He said, of course, Islam is going to have things in common with previous religions because uh, it's a continuation. But we didn't, just, we didn't just cite examples of Christianity and Judaism. Why do Muslims uh, take the pilgrimage to Mecca? Why do they bow towards the Kaaba? Why do they kiss the black stone? Why do they perform the, the ablutions? These were pagan practices. So it looks uh, like 
you have a lot in common, not just with Judaism and Christianity, but with paganism. Uh, the issue of the self-serving revelations. Uh, Muhammad received all kinds of revelations that seem to have no point other than satisfying his desires. And if you have a problem with me saying that, Aisha said the exact same thing in Sahil Bukhari, where she said, uh, my, your Lord seems to hasten to satisfy your desires. This was directed towards Muhammad. We uh, address many scientific errors because this is such a common claim in Islam today, uh, but our opponents didn't defend the Quran uh, from uh, the scientific problems. Uh, the demonic issue, uh, that Islam doesn't just look like uh, something that had a human origin. Some of the teachings uh, seem to have something spiritually wicked behind them. Uh, Muhammad's first impression of whatever he encountered was that it was demonic in nature. We have the satanic verses. We have Muhammad being a victim of black magic. Uh, these went untouched throughout the debate. Uh, so this all comes down to what evidence do we have for Islam? We've seen we have a lot of evidence against Islam. The only two uh, arguments I could, I could clearly distinguish here were the argument from literary excellence, the Quran is so wonderful, the poetry is so good, it must be from God, but we saw that this would be absurd. And besides that, it's just false. Look at, look at the people around uh, Muhammad during his time. They rejected this argument. Muhammad won very few followers when he said, listen to my poetry. He won vastly more followers when it was, let's go out and get the war booty. And finally, we had the argument from good teachings. Uh, Muhammad's teachings are good, but we saw massive problems with prostitution and sex with uh, little girls and so on. These are massive problems. And so based on the evidence we have here, I would invite our, our opponents and every Muslim out there to reject Islam. Amen. Now, the question still is here. Uh, is Christianity true? We haven't discussed that tonight, but we'd be happy to defend our beliefs. And I assure Amen. you, we can give a much stronger case than we've seen for Islam. Okay, great. Now, so we are done with our conclusions and our crossfire at this point. We have we have a caller on the line, and we By the will... way, before we take, can you set up how it's going to be? Yes, I should. I apologize. Thank yeah, you, so Sam. We, we have about twenty-five minutes left in our program, and we will tell everyone. I, I may, must. Uh, that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned this. We will. <laughs> uh, fifth, fi I'm sorry. We have fifteen minutes left. We will make this very clear to everyone here, as we have all this this whole program and watching our time. We will also watch our time with our callers. So one question, tell us your name and tell us your question, and then we have to move on. We want to try to get as many as we can. So I know it's Tony. Tony, what is your question? Oh, so uh, again, sorry. not to know how much time do the people have to respond and the counter response. So if it's if to the Muslims, they have how many minutes and yeah. do we have I a counter I would say we'll, we'll give them roughly about a minute or so to respond okay. and then you know, a minute for a rebuttal. So okay. we'll, we'll watch the clock on that, but we're going to be trying to reasonable. So, but, so just to clarify, whoever yes. the question is directed to gets a minute, and yes. then whoever it's not yes. directed to gets a minute for Correct. Okay, that's Correct. Fine. Tony, I know you're on the line. Tell us your question and who's it directed to. Mm. Yeah, my question is for Abu. Uh, first off, I didn't know that, that American forces were fighting in the name of Christ. That, that's news to me. But my question <laughs> is, um, you, you keep saying that Islam does not exploit women like the West. What do you make of Islam's uh, concept of paradise, uh, where there will be perpetual virgins with large breasts yeah. uh, who, and men with eternal erections? Yeah. That makes our porn in the West look like uh, Sesame Street. I'd rather have God's glory for eternity than the hooties with the booties. Abu. Uh, that's all i got to say. Thanks, Tony. Abu. And, uh, yeah, there's been an exa exaggeration of the verse, and obviously the Hurrin, um, they are women of, of paradise that will be given to, uh, uh, you know, um, as a reward for the for the for the martyrs, and uh, obviously that is a gift, um, a, a reward from Almighty God in paradise, and obviously we can be you can be as envious as you want of that, but that that is an open that reward is open for you, uh, for anyone of you, you know, if you want to embrace Islam and you want to, you know, commit to Islam and, and die as a martyr, then that reward is open to you as well. So, um, again, there's a bit of exaggeration on the, on, on the verse, especially the last part that you mentioned. But obviously, um, absolutely, there are um, virgin women for the Muslim men in paradise. And then, alhamdulillah, I hope that, inshallah, I die as a martyr, um, Allah accepts me as shaheed, and I hope that I get that reward. I've got nothing, nothing to, you know, feel shy about that. Okay. okay. And the one-minute response? Uh, in, 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 we have about 10 seconds left if you want to make any additional comments. Time's ticking away. Right. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let our Christians respond to that one. You have one minute. Okay, glory to Jesus Christ. The heaven that awaits the true believers is not a brothel in which you will have eternal erections deflowering virgins for all eternity. None of us are envious of that. If this is what you call paradise, you can keep it. What awaits the true believer is dwelling in the presence of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The greatest joy that a Christian has is not deflowering virgins for all eternity. The greatest joy that Christians have is to bask in the infinite beauty, majesty, glory, 
love, joy, and peace of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your hurries uh, pale by comparison, infinitely pale by comparison to the infinite majesty of Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name, he saves you from this darkness so that you don't be eager to die for a false religion. To go to a paradise that doesn't exist, I pray you turn to Jesus and enjoy his infinite pleasure, a pleasure that words cannot describe because there's nothing like Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. Amen. Okay, we have another caller. Thank you, gentlemen. We have another caller. Brother Tidor, you have uh, a question, and who is it directed to? Hello, hello, gentlemen. Good evening. How am I? Uh, yes, my name is Theodore. I want to ask a question to Mr. Sheikh. Your question. Good evening for everybody. Thank yeah, you. Very quickly, please. Why, Mr. Sheikh, why are you Islamic? All of you, do you want to kill Jupiter and people rather than see? Okay. Before this year, after the Lord, before the Sea or after the Lord put in Israel. If you as Palestinian Arabia go to Okay, okay, Arabia, we don't need what is, I'm not we just yeah, we got we you just, made why the do you question. want to kill Jews and Christians, right? Okay. Uh, Omar Sheikh Sheikh Omar, you you have one minute uh, okay, to respond. Uh, if he didn't hear it, could you re restate kind of the uh I, 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 I can't did you Russia, understand the question, Sheikh Omar? I did not hear the question. He speaks Chinese, but oh, I will okay. correct myself <laughs> for, for what I understand. You see, my understanding, first of all, before Islam was the Abrahamic faith existing in Mecca. Who built the Kaaba? Is Ibrahim and his son Ishmael. And he is the one who used to make tawaf. He's always to kiss the black stone. So the Muslims used to follow the previous messengers, not the pagan worshippers. For God's sake, Islam condemned any pagan worshippers, any pagan way of life, but confirmed the true Christians and Jews who was existing their practice. But unfortunately, they have some distortion in their own books and they believe Jesus, the Son of God. The question the man he asked, I did not hear it. If you tell me what the questions, I will answer straight away. Oh, you have 15 seconds now. He said, okay. uh, why do you order to kill Jews and Christians? But your time is up. Because, because they are occupiers of Palestine, oh, not so. Jews and Christians. Occupiers of Palestine, the occupiers of Chechnya, the occupiers of, of, uh, of uh, Kashmir, occupiers of Afghanistan, occupiers, regardless, they are Jews, Christian, Hindu, Sikhs, okay. Greeks. Okay, that's it. With fact, I guess, mm -hmm. Time right. to respond. Uh, well, uh, the, the, the question was, why do Muslims want to kill uh, Jews and Christians? And the Sheikh keeps saying, because we're, we're occupiers. That, again, that's not what the Quran says. Surah 929, Sam quoted it, fight those who do not believe in Allah. Not fight those who are occupying you. Fight those who are oppressing you. No, fight those who do not believe. Look exactly. at every criteria of fighting the Jews and Christians in that verse. It has, to, it has to do with what we believe and it has to do with what we practice. Nothing about us oppressing you. It's fighting us based on our beliefs. And you find that, you find that over and over again in Surah 9 and elsewhere. Uh, not only that, I want to real yes. quickly add to what David said. He just said because they occupied Muslim lands. Now, are you going to be consistent and condemn Muhammad and his followers because they stole the lands of others? People who never oppressed Islam, uh, Muslims, never heard of Islam, they went and took over their lands, so they were occupiers. So, Sheikh Omar, are you going to be consistent and say Muhammad and his followers stand condemned by your criterion because they stole the lands of Jews and Christians and as well as the Hindus? And we can conclude with free Mecca. Amen. It was taken by he Muslims. He stole it from the, it was the, the pagans. from the pagans. Exactly. So by your the criterion, pagans, you condemn we'll Muhammad. Okay, we have another we have another caller, and uh, sir, could you tell us your name and your question? Uh, to the Muslim guests, uh, thank you for engaging in a respectable debate. Mm -hmm. I would yes. like to take this time to invite you to the true original Islam, and that is submitting <laughs> to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God incarnate. Amen. My question is for the Muslims. You mentioned words to the effect that Islam is the solution. I'm wondering what the Islamic solution is for homosexuality, and more importantly, would you practice that solution on your children, God forbid, should they be afflicted with the sin of homosexuality? And to David and Sam, great job. Please follow up when the Muslims spin and refuse to answer my question. All glory Thank to you. Jesus Christ. Okay, you, uh, is this uh, Omar or Abu? Wants to answer. We have one minute. Either one. Either yes. One. As far as homosexuality is concerned, it is forbidden in Islam, in Judaism, in Christianity. I don't think Jesus, when he come to return back, he to say, long live homosexual people. Unless you believe that, or you be inside, I never know that. So definitely homosexuality is condemned by the prophet Lut and the prophet Abraham and Moses and Jesus and even the final messenger Muhammad. And this is the matter, is it clear? And really, the other things really, I will leave it to my colleague, you know, Abu Muwahid to say it because I'm not hearing, you know, what you are saying. 
Abu? Uh, yeah, I didn't really catch that myself. But just to say, just to add um, one point, um, I've got a question myself actually because um, someone sent sent me a message as well saying that you know, does the Bible permit um, incest? Because obviously there's a verse in the, in, in in your in one of the chapters there that permit incest and even the issue of Satan overpowering God. But that's that's one issue, you know, because there's a lot of contradictions on your side, you know, speaking about pedophilia and rape, and yet it's so rampant. Okay, Abu, I'm sorry, our time is up. Uh, okay, David and Sam. Uh, let me quickly address what he just said. Instead of addressing the question directly, David Angel said, Does, what is the solution of Islam concerning homosexuals, and would you implement the ruling of Islam if your children, God forget, forbid, became homosexuals? Notice they never answered that question because they won't because they understand that if they were to say that according to Islam Sharia, Sharia homosexuals must be killed they know that won't fly too well with Westerners and secularists but then he turned his, his attention to attacking the Bible the Bible permits incest well since you didn't mention a chapter or verse I don't know what you're alluding to however isn't it ironic that earlier you said you said Sheikh Omar said Muhammad confirmed the Torah and the gospel he confirmed it but then he abrogated it now it's different to say that he said the scriptures were corrupt. Nowhere does Muhammad say the scriptures were corrupt. Abrogate is not the same thing as saying it's corrupt. You just attacked the very scriptures that your prophet confirmed, further proving he's a false prophet. You're saying the Bible is full of contradictions, but you just admitted that Muhammad confirmed the Bible, therefore it's full of contradictions. Muhammad was wrong to confirm it. So by your criterion, you condemned Muhammad. So why are you a Muslim? Is the clock working? Okay, we're going to take the next caller. Lewis, what is your question, and who is it directed Hello. to? Uh it's directed to Sheikh Omar and Abu. Now, you said Islam is a tolerant religion, and you make it, and you said that Jews and Christians live in Muslim lands. Now, as Salafis, I think you would, you would follow the example of one of your rightly guided caliphs, Umar bin al-Khattab. And uh, your question, isn't Lewis? It true that isn't it true that Umar, when he conquered the Jews and the Christians, allowed them to live on the condition that they can't build new churches or repair the, the ones that they have that are dis, in, in disrepair. They can't imitate the Muslim dress or hairstyles or anything. They can't have public processions. They can't recite their holy book. What is your question, out. Lewis? Isn't, I'm just saying, I'm asking them, isn't it, aren't these things true? If, as Salafis, do you believe these practices should the be Christians enforced? Will be oppressed and forbidden from building churches and so forth. Did you get the question, Omar and, and Abu? I get the questions. Okay. Go ahead. You have one minute. Yes. Yes, in Islam, uh, it's not allowed for you is to build a new church. The churches you have, is, you can remain them and you can uh, look after them, but you cannot build a new church. And I ask my colleagues or your friend, I don't know his name, uh, can you just, because he said there's nothing called defend yourself. Can you fight in you know, chapter 2, verse 194? Whoever attack you, attack him back, regardless if it's whatever his religion. This is really, if you read the Quran now, go to the chapter 2, verse 194. And more than that, about distortion of the Bible, you say you can go to chapter 4, verse 46. God said they distort their own books. The Old Testament, the Jews, you know, distorted. And this is really the fact. So I'm sorry, I'm using the answering of the man straight away. And I'm even by capitalizing on the time to answer another point. Those two chapters and two verses, chapter 4, verse 46, and chapter 2, verse 194, please read them, you, oh, in your own translation. Thank you, Omar. David and Sam. Yeah, uh, you know, it's ironic. He quoted chapter 4, verse 4, 40, uh, chapter 4, verse 46, saying, uh, that the Jews somehow credit their scriptures. Uh, Sheikh Omar, it's obvious you didn't even read chapter 4. This is talking about the Jews twisting the words of Muhammad. That's chapter 4, verse 46. That passage is not talking about the Jews corrupting the Torah. It's the Jews twisting the words of Muhammad. It's right here. It says, they say to Muhammad, we hear and disobey. So according to you, the Jews corrupted your Quran. Thank you. So thank you for proving your Quran is corrupt. Why do you believe it? There's another passage that proves that it's your Quran corrupt, not the Bible. Surat al-Hijr, chapter 15, verses 19 to 91, it says, Woe to the dividers who tear the Quran to shreds. So thank you for proving that the Quran testifies, Jews corrupted your Quran, but nowhere does it say it corrupted the Torah or the Gospel. So you're mistaken. I only have a few seconds, so I'll just say that the Sheikh quoted Surah 2 to show that Islam allows fighting and self-defense only. Uh, you know that's been abrogated by Surah 9, which commands you to fight thank people you. based on their beliefs. Okay, uh, we have one last caller for the evening. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. His name is Jeff. What is your question and who is it directed to? It's to 
directed to uh, Omar and Abu. First of all, I'd like to say that the Brother David and Brother Sam are doing an excellent job. I've been uh, listening to the debate, and I noticed that when Brother David and when Brother Sam make a claim against Islam, they'll use the Quran and they'll use the Hadith to support their claims. But the uh, Muslim brothers, they, they, when, they make, when they attempt to deny the claim, they never use their sources to deny exactly. it. They just say it's wrong, you're false, you're a lie, but they never support it with any uh, source. Question. Thank you, sir. Right. We need your question. Right. We appreciate your observation. What is your question? And we'd like to give them a chance to respond. Jeff? Your question, Jeff. Did we lose Jeff? Jeff? My quick, oh, go ahead. Quick, your question. Why, why don't the Muslims respond to uh, the, the assertion of Brother Dave and Brother Sam? They use sources. Brother Dave and uh, Brother Sam, they quote the Quran and the Hadith to support their claims, but the Muslims, all they do is deny, but they don't use any sources uh, to back up what they believe. And, and why don't they? Why don't they? Omar and Ob Abu, you have one minute. I leave it to Abu, but I can tell you, we have answered all what you said from the Quran, but you keep quoting your own verses the way you like it. If one verse, you leave the other verse. Other verse said you defend yourself. Now you said it's obligated. Nobody said to you, Jihad, obligated. Self defense and offensive, both are in Islam available. I will conquer the world to establish Islam. I will defend my land from anybody who wants to attack. Abu Muwahid, you can take the remain. Yeah, um, basically, uh, Jazakallah Khairan, Shaykh Omar. Um, uh, Basically, you know, to answer your questions, because obviously, if I did miss any, or if, if the sheikh missed any, we don't do it deliberately, because you ask, so, you raise, you raise so many issues. But in relation to children committing homosexuality, children are are not accountable in Islam. You know, what a child does, any kind of sin they do, they're not accountable. We don't believe like you do that they're born with sin. We believe that they're innocent, in fact. So that if a child was to even you know, I don't even think a child would even do that, but if, if they were to do that, whatever it is, any kind of sin, they're not accountable when they're children. And the other issue is about the Bible. The, the, the Bible... Uh, oh, today, okay, Abu, we're done. We're done. Sorry, we have to make this brief. Gentlemen, any last comments? Uh, real quickly? quickly, he's got to respond to that because it's his turn. Just real quickly, uh, you just said that Islam doesn't acknowledge that people are born in sin. We're going to offer a debate challenge. We're going to challenge you. Does Islam affirm original sin? I hope you'll accept. You're mistaken. Your Quran and Sunnah affirms the doctrine of original sin, and I'm willing to debate you anytime, any place. Maybe we can do it at ABN. I hope you accept the challenge. Go ahead, David. All right. The Quran claims over and over and over again throughout to be clear. It claims to be clear, and and it also claims in Surah 2, verse 106 and 16, 101, that earlier verses are abrogated or canceled by later verses. What do we find? Yes, you do find uh, passages in the Quran. Uh, which say you fight in self-defense. Those aren't the final revelation. You right. also have Surah 929, which we've already quoted, fight those who do not believe. If you tell me it means something else, it means fight in self-defense, you're telling me Allah just isn't clear. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He, he, he should have stated it more clearly. You could speak better than Allah. And it's not just 929. If we look over and over again in Surah 9, Sir, uh, verse 73, O prophets, strive hard against the unbelievers and hypocrites and be unyielding to them. Be unyielding to who? Unbelievers, not people who are attacking you. Verse 111 David, David, defines Muslims as people who slay in the name of Allah. This is the hard part. I hate to I hate to cut anyone off here, especially with this past sure enthusiasm, do. but I got to do this. You know, that's what they tell me to do here. So we do appreciate, gentlemen, being on this program tonight. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's absolutely. Uh, thank God for the opportunity. And thank you, Omar and Abu, for being a part of this uh, cordial debate tonight. Got a lot of things covered in the last uh, hour and a half, two hours here. And we are grateful for everyone here that's been watching our program, has been calling in. Continue to uh, stay tuned this week as we continue with our Jesus or Muhammad marathon. My name is Chris. God bless you. Thanks for, thanks for your participation tonight. We'll see you next time.